Hey, what's up? Welcome back. Patrick here and moving on to the next video. We are going to continue domain range stating whether these relations are functions or not. Uh, and these are algebraic uh, relations, right? So just a little bit more review. Some of it may be repetitive, but uh, some repetition never hurts. So with this first one, we got y equals 4x plus 3 squared plus 5. So notice that this is a quadratic given in vertex form. It's always nice when it's given in vertex form because the vertex is what is going to affect the range, more specifically the y value, right? So the vertex of this quadratic is negative 3 and 5. And so if we do a rough sketch of this, negative 3 is here, 5 is here, vertex is here. And because the a value is positive, it's a quadratic that's opening up like this. And so from here, domain, as we know for a quadratic, is going to be x er, right, for, from uh, negative infinity to positive infinity, right? All of the x values, because this extends infinitely, all of the y values between negative infinity and po or sorry, all the x values between negative infinity and positive infinity are going to get hit at some point, right? So this is the set notation that is interval notation. But what about the range, right? So the range is a little bit more specific. Again, it depends on the y value of the vertex, which is five in this case, and whether it's opening up or down, it's opening up. So it's basically all of the y values that are greater than or equal to five, right? Including the five. So we would say the range, it is all of the y values that are greater than or equal to positive five. Okay, and then in uh, interval notation, we would say it's from five, including the five, all the way to positive infinity, like that. And then is this a function? Yes, quadratic is always a function, always passes the vertical line test. There's no pairs of points that share the same x value. So we would say it is a function. So then moving on to part B, we got y equals negative 2 to the power of x. Now, if you remember from grade 11 functions, this negative here, because this is not in a bracket like that, it, this negative is actually not attached to the 2. There's like a imaginary negative 1 in front, right? So we could picture this as rewritten as like that right, with a negative one in front. And if you remember, that's the a value. So just as a quick review, any exponential function looks like this, right? And we're gonna go into graphing with transformations in a few sections in this chapter, but just a quick review from uh, grade 11 functions. So notice that the a value here is the negative one and then we have two to the power of x. Now, what's also important for the domain and range, more specifically the range for an exponential function, is this c value. Because if you remember the c value for an exponential function in particular, that's always gonna be the horizontal asymptote. And so notice that our c value in this case is just zero. So we have a horizontal asymptote at zero, which is just the x-axis, and so, if you were to plot this, just a rough sketch, now two to the power of x, right? Just the base function like this, it simply looks like that, okay? And two to the power of x also has a c value of zero, right? The horizontal asymptote is at zero. So how is negative one times two to the power of x? going to look like? Like how is that a value of negative one going to affect the graph? Well, it's just going to reflect it in the x-axis. If you remember, a negative a value reflects functions in the x-axis. So it's going to look like this right here. So from here, you could tell the blue graph, well, all exponential graphs, unless it's a word problem, the domain is always going to be x er right? Or from negative infinity to positive infinity. There is no limit on, or there's no restrictions on the x values from negative infinity to positive infinity. But what about the range? Well, notice that the range 
this is going to keep extending downwards infinitely. So notice that all the way to negative infinity, all of those y values are going to be hit. And then if we come back up, the maximum y value, it's never going to reach zero, right? It's never going to go past zero. So really what the range is here is y can be anything as long as y is less than that horizontal asymptote of zero. Not equal to because it's never touching that horizontal asymptote of zero. It's never touching the axis, right? So we just say less than zero like that. Okay, so basically the range for an exponential function, it's always affected by the C value, where the horizontal asymptote is, and then whether the function is above the horizontal asymptote or below, and what's going to tell you that is the A value. If the A value is negative or positive, if it's positive, it's above. If it's negative, it's going to be below the horizontal asymptote. A negative K value won't tell you that because a negative K value, it reflects it in the Y axis. And so notice that it doesn't affect whether the function is above or below, right? It just stays above even if the K value is negative. Okay, this green graph here that I just graphed is 2 to the power of negative X. So it's only the negative a value that actually reflects it over the horizontal asymptote, which then in turn <clears throat> um, affects the range of an exponential function. All right, so the range of this one, y is less than zero, y can be anything, it's less than zero. In interval notation, we would say it's all the y values from negative infinity all the way to zero, but it's not including the zero like that. And then is this a function? Yes, it's a function. It's basically passing the horizontal line test everywhere. And then finally, part C, we have the relation x squared plus y squared is equal to 16. So hopefully you remember here, this is basically a circle, right? x squared plus y squared is equal to the radius squared. And so if we put it in this format, how can we rewrite 16 as something squared? Well, it's just going to be 4 squared, right? So x squared plus y squared is equal to 4 squared. So we know this is a circle basically with a radius of 4. And this circle has a center at the origin. And so we know that all of the intercepts, the y-intercept here, the x-intercept here on the negative side, they're all going to be 4s, right? This is going to be a y-intercept of 0, negative 4. And then over here, we're going to have an x-intercept of 4 and 0. And so we just make a circle, not the most to scale, not the most symmetrical. But anyway, should be just a perfect symmetrical circle like that. Right, and so from here, what is the domain and range going to be? So notice that uh, there's going to be restrictions for both the domain and range. So the domain, notice that the x values can be anything as long as they're what? In between negative 4 and positive 4, right? Negative 4 is the minimum x value. There's no x values outside here. And then the maximum value is positive 4. So all of these x values are fine, right? Because they're on. So all the x values, all the real numbers in between negative 4 and positive 4. So 0, 1, negative 3.99999, right? All of that is within the domain. So we say it's all the x values, all the real numbers that are between negative 4 greater than or equal to negative 4, but less than or equal to positive 4, like that. And then in interval notation, we would say from negative 4 to positive 4. Okay, what about the uh, range? Well, range, same thing, right? The lowest y value is negative 4. There's no y values below that. And then the highest y value is positive 4. So it's all of these y values right here. So we would say the range is uh, y can be anything all the real numbers as long as y is greater than or equal to negative 4 but less than or equal to positive 4. In interval notation we would say from negative 4 to positive 4 and there's square brackets because we're including the negative 4 and the positive 4. And then is this relation a function? Well no it's not. 
right? It's failing the vertical line test pretty much everywhere except the uh, x-intercepts, right? Because there's going to be multiple points that share the same x value. So it's failing. So a circle is always not a function. And that is the end of the video. Hopefully you enjoyed that. If you want to find more videos like this, you can go to my website, allthingsmathematics.com. Over there, all my courses are organized for both high school and university. All the videos are organized by chapter. Also, if you have any questions, you can hit me up. My contact details are also on the website. Enjoy your day, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace out.